Hey guys and welcome to another quick Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to take a simple little fun photo like this one and we're going to turn it into a single panel comic like this. So let's get started. The first thing we need to know is the canvas size of this image. The canvas is simply this open space where our image exists within Photoshop on our screen. So to find that out we go up to image and we go down to canvas size. Now we're going to measure in pixels. So if yours says something like inches or centimeters, millimeters or something, just click where it says centimeters or whatever it is and then choose pixels. My image is 5,045 pixels wide and 3541 pixels high. And I want to make some extra room on my canvas so that the canvas is actually larger than the image. So this takes a little bit of guessing and your image might be a different size pixel wise than mine is. So you might take a little trial and error. So I've already worked this out. So I know that if I go to 5,245 and 4,841 and click OK, I create this larger canvas. Now here is my image on on the canvas you can see it over here in the layers panel. Now my image is still centered so using the move tool I'm going to adjust my image so it is where I want it to be. And I want there to be roughly the same amount of space around my panel right around here. Now these little boxes right here tell me that this is actually transparent. If I save this as a PNG that would be invisible. If I save it as a JPEG it would just be a solid white block. But I actually want to fill this in. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to fill it in using my paint bucket tool. So we're going to go over here to our tool panel and down at the bottom there will be three little dots and if you hold down control and click and you'll get these sub tools and you want to go down toward the bottom and click paint bucket tool and then go somewhere in this empty space and left click on your mouse or your keypad and that simply fills in your color. And in this case it's white because typically comic books have a white border. Now if your color didn't fill with white, it's a different color, that's because over here you need to make sure that white is your foreground color. So you've got these two little boxes over here, make sure that the top one is white. If it's black and white, and this is probably black, you just have to simply reverse it by clicking this little double arrow and clicking it again, filling it with white. If it's a different color altogether, if it's red or green or something, you can double click on this little panel and then you can just use your color picker and make sure that it's the right color. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to add a speech bubble. And to do that, we're going to simply utilize the magnificent tool that is Google Images. So I've gone ahead and found one. So I'm going to open this image, I'm going to open it in Photoshop, and then I am going to use one of the familiar tools that I know you know how to use, the quick selection tool. And we're simply going to select everything in the bubble, including this black outline. Now you might not use this speech bubble, you might find one of your own, you can do whatever you want. This is the one I chose. We're going to go up to Select and Mask. Let's increase this a bit, Command Plus. Make sure those edges look sharp, click OK. We're going to Command C, Copy, and then we're going to go back over to our image and Command V. And there's our speech bubble. Then we can just use the Move tool and put it where we want it. It's way too small, so Command T for our transform. And we're going to increase it and I'm going to stretch it out like this. And when you're ready, hit Enter and there's your speech bubble. So now that we have our speech bubble, we're going to add the text. So make sure that your box over here in your color palette is black. Choose your texting tool and then whatever you want your character to be saying you simply just type it in. My Spider-Man is going to be serenading Deadpool. Now this text doesn't look right and so there is a font that you can download and it's called Anime Ace. Now I've already downloaded it so I'm going to make sure that my text is active. I'm going to double click on my text so that everything is highlighted then I'm going to go up to my text picker and I'm going to choose animate ace and now you can see that this looks more like comic book font I'm going to bring it down and put it on my speech bubble and I want to space this out a little bit so I'm going to sort of put this right about here where I want it in my speech bubble I'm going to go back into my text and I'm going to make a couple of changes so I'm simply going to put my cursor here and I'm going to drop this down 
so that it fits a little better. And I'm going to also make sure that it is center aligned. And over here, you'll see your paragraphs and it'll either be aligned to the right, you can align it to the left, but I want it center aligned. It's still a little bit too small, so I'm going to change my text again, text size, by making sure my text is active and then just dragging this up so it's a little bigger. Now this doesn't feel like he's singing, and so I want to put some, uh, maybe some little musical notes in there. So you maybe want to go and get some musical note images from Google or something like that. So we'll do the same kind of thing that we did with our speech bubble. So we'll go to file, open, find our music that we downloaded. And this time I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to go up to select and I'm going to say color range. And in this case, I want it to pick out only the black. So I'm just gonna click on the black areas. See over here, now you can see what it picked up. Click okay. Hold down command and click C and then bring it back over and click D and there it is. Now it's going to be invisible if you put it over here. So let's put it here and then let's hold down command and click I and that inverts it. So it turns it into, instead of a black musical note, it turns it into a white musical note. And then maybe you wanna put more there, command J to duplicate it and maybe I'll bring another one down here to make it feel more like there's music playing all around. So this basically is the image that we've got. Now we want to add our little title and everything up here. So I want to put a little colorful box up here. So I'm going to go to my shapes and choose the rectangle tool. And then I'm going to decide what color I want this. So Spider-Man and Deadpool both have a red motif in their costume. So we'll make it red, maybe a little brighter. Click OK. And then I am going to simply drag out Click here. And now I still wanted to bring it up here a little bit, so I'm gonna Command T. I'm gonna stretch this out, and there we go. Now we're going to choose what we want in our title. So, I don't know, we need to come up with a title for this comic strip. Maybe I'll call it Song Slinger. So again, click your horizontal type tool. Now it did type in the same color, so I want a different color. I'm gonna make it yellow, because Spider-Man is yellow and red and i don't like this font for this comic strip so i'm going to choose something else and again you can go and download any font that you really want i don't know if i have a spider-man font here or not but i'll find something and then when i've chosen i will just make this as big as i want it right here and i think i want to put some outline around this to make it stand out just a little bit more so i'm going to go down to fx i'm going to choose stroke and now the stroke is now the same color as the font and if it's not the color you want we're just simply going to click our color picker and i'm just going to make it black and i'm going to click ok so we're pretty much done what we'll call our first draft. So now it's time to sort of take a look at our image. What do we like? What needs to be fixed? Can we do anything else? It's good, but how do we make it better? So the first thing that I notice is the words in the speech bubble, there's actually a punctuation error. So I'm going to fix that. So the first thing I need to do then is go over to my text layer down here in your layers panel. Make sure your text is active. And then we're going to go in and I'm just going to put the comma there because it belongs there. The other thing is I feel like there's not really a whole lot of pizzazz happening when it comes to this text overall. So I'm going to take out Deadpool. Then I'm going to put Deadpool back, but in a different font. So I'm gonna create a new text layer. I'm just gonna retype Deadpool. I'm going to highlight my text because it's black and I'm gonna make it red. I'm actually gonna make the text this same color. So I click on my little color panel over here and then to make sure I get the exact same color, you can bring this little eyedropper onto any color you want and just grab that color by left clicking and then it'll grab that color and show up in your color palette. So each color has its own little special color code and now I know specifically that this color down here here is the same as this color here. And when you're happy with that, click OK. Now I don't want the anime ace, I want a different text. So I'm going to, while it's still highlighted, go up to my text panel and I'm going to choose a different text. And you can choose whichever one you want. I'm going to choose one called beat word. And then I'm going to bring it up here. Now, of course, that's way too small. So again, making sure that your text tool is active. I'm going to bring up the size and then I'm going to position it using my move tool. And I'm going to add some ellipses at the end, those three little dots, just to make it look like this is mid song. And honestly, I feel like this text color is a little bit too dark. So I'm going to change it. So you simply click on your color palette over here or over here. Either one will do. And I'm going to brighten it up just a bit. 
and I am going to add the stroke. So click effects, stroke, and then the stroke here is about six. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger, not too big. And it's on the inside, so it's actually taking up some of my text. I don't like that, so I'm gonna put it on the outside. And then you just sort of monkey around with your sliders and sizes and things like that until you get what you want. When you're happy, click OK. And then the last thing I'm going to do, I want to feel like there's some real emotion here. So I'm actually going to provide a little bit of motion in this word. So using my text warp tool, I'm going to use the flag option to give it a little bit of a wave. That's a bit too much. So using my slider, I can just bring that down a little bit. Again, if you do this, yours would be different. And then with the move tool active, you just kind of put it in place. You can nudge it with your arrows and get it right where you want it. I might even put it on a little bit of an angle. So Command T, angle it a little bit, and when you're happy, hit Enter. And I think that looks really good. And it feels a little more comic book-like. The other thing I think I want to do is, I don't like Song Slinger. I want to call it THE Song Slinger. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add another text layer. So hitting my text, just put it up where I want it, the. Now again, it's at the wrong font, it's the wrong color. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back to Anime Ace and I'm going to make it black and click OK. Now my the that I just added is lower than my rectangle, right? It's below it. And so this rectangle is sort of like a piece of bread on top of a sandwich. So I want the the on top. So I drag it to the top and now there it is. And of course it's too big. So I'm gonna go to my text tool and I use my little slider here. You can also just double click this and you know make the text whatever size you want. But this little slider, putting your cursor over the double T and then you can just sort of roll it back and forth. It sort of changes the shape for you. You get a better sense of it as you go. So that looks about right size. I'm going to just move it into place and I'm going to angle it. So Command T, put it on an angle and enter. Now I feel like there's a more sort of comic book like feel to this whole thing. So one last thing I'm going to do, and this is completely optional, but I want it to have a bit of a pulpy texture to feel like it was on a comic book page at one point. So I'm gonna add an overlay. So I've gone online and I have found an old paper overlay, just something from Google Images, and all I'm going to do is bring it onto this canvas. So you go to your finder, find your overlay, and then you can just drag it onto your canvas. Move it around, place it where you want it. Now you can see that the paper is under the words Song Slinger, and that's because of the position in your layer panel. So I just set up my paper where I want it. I'm gonna hit enter, and then I'm going to just bring it to the top, because I want it to cover everything, and there you go. Now the last thing I'm going to do is change my blending mode. So right now it's at normal, so I think I'm going to choose multiply. And that just sort of makes it a little bit translucent, but it leaves a lot of the texture and things. So it looks like it's kind of old newspaper. You can see it in the white is no longer pure white. There's some texture up here, and I think it just adds a little more authenticity. We're done. This is it. My final comic book panel, just the way I want it. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to save it. So this is Photoshop 2021 and it's a little bit different than previous versions. So when you go to save it, go to file and then save a copy. And then we can call it whatever you want to call it. So let's call it Song Slinger and then save it as a JPEG. I always save it to the maximum size, the large file, click OK. And now we have it saved as a JPEG on our desktop to do with it whatever we like. So that's it. Pretty basic actually. A lot of the tools you're familiar with, there's a couple of new ones here, but not difficult. And I'm really looking forward to what you bring to the table when it comes to your comic strips. So enjoy the process and I can't wait to see your work.